How's it going, people? I know, I haven't done anything uh, on YouTube in a while. Not on this channel, anyway. But, it is Valentine's Day, or at least it will be in about 15 minutes. And, have a little uh, leftover from uh, New Year's, when I was going to do a video, and I actually did try. But it got things went a little haywire, and uh, it just wasn't worth editing. <laughs> so this is my official new first video of uh, 2021, and um, I have a love letter to share with you. Being Valentine's Day, although I don't know when I'll be getting this up. I don't have internet at the house. Uh, but there are places I can go. Uh, there's a love letter. Father's love letter. And yeah, fathers, as in the, you know, Sky Daddy, the uh, uh, All Father, whatever. All right. An intimate message from God to you. It sounds specious, but let's go with it. The words you are about to read are true. Okay, so we got their word for it. All right, I think I'm ready. And they will change your life if you let them. These words in here. I might. We'll see. This letter comes from the heart of God to tell you that he loves you and that he is the father you've been looking for all your life. <laughs> hmm. The promises God makes in these words from the Bible, are directed to his children. Those who have placed their trust in God's Son, Jesus. As their Savior. And the good news is that you can become a child of God. Wow. Be sure to read the last page of this pamphlet to find out more. You know, I tend to do that. Once I start, you know, I kind of get propelled on, you know, and try to finish anyway. Uh, okay. Let's, uh, let's read this magical epistle. My child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. I know when you sit down and when you rise up. I am familiar with all your ways. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered. You're not helping, Loki. <sighs> yeah. Uh, all right. Hang on a second here. Technical difficulties. Mm. Say hi, Loki. Now go away. All right. Okay, let's read this magical and intimate epistle from God. My child, you may not know me, but I know everything about you. And in parentheses, I got Psalm 139, 1. Lots of Bible citations in this letter. I'm starting to suspect this isn't a letter at all. Psalm 139.1 O Lord, 
Thou hast searched me and know me. All right, that sounds personal. Sounds like he's talking to the author of this psalm. And not all of us. Just saying, right? I know when you sit down and when you rise up. Psalm 139, 2. Moving along. Psalm 139, 2. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. I am familiar with all your ways. Psalm 139.3. Psalm 139.3. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. Yeah, he's talking to all of us. It just sounds like he's talking to the author only. Even the very hairs on your head are numbered. Uh, but that's according to Matthew 10, 29, and 30. Okay. Now we're in Matthew 10, 29, and 30. Are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And one of them shall not fall on the ground without your father. But the very hairs on your head are numbered. Fear ye not, therefore. Ye are of more value than many sparrows. Sorry, I read one more extra verse, but couldn't resist. You were made in my image. Genesis one twenty seven. Okay, we're made in God's image according to Genesis one twenty seven. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Okay. In me you live and move and have your being, for you are my offspring. Acts seventeen Acts seventeen twenty eight. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain also of our own poets have said. For we are also his offspring. And then they go into, you know, polemics against idolatry. But we're supposed to stop right there. You know, that's all they needed for their point. I knew you even before you were conceived. <laughs> Jeremiah 1, 4, and 5. Jeremiah 1, 4, and 5. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, Jeremiah. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Yeah, it sounds like he's talking to all of us, doesn't it? That's not specifically, you know, for Jeremiah. That's for all of us. He knew all of us before we were born. He just mentioned it to Jeremiah because he was mighty special. See, that's the problem with these, uh, you know, books attributed to, like, Jeremiah and Isaiah. Because they're often, you know, like, in the first person. And God's talking directly to them. So, does this stuff really apply to all of us, or was it between Jerry and God, and he just wrote it in his diary? I don't know. Could be, you know.
But anyway, God used it in his letter, so I guess that gives it validation. I chose you when I planned creation. Uh, Ephesians 1, 11 and 12. Hey, Ephesians 11 and 12. In whom also we have obtained an inheritance, be, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ. If, all right, they mentioned predestined. I guess that almost fits with the, that claim they just made. Or they made a mistake and cited the wrong verse. I don't know. They, they said they mentioned predestined. I guess that means all the way back before creation. Discuss. You were not a mistake. For all your days are written in my book. All right, now, supposedly King David wrote Psalms. I'm pretty sure he didn't, but I mean, let's say he did. It's We're here in dialogue between God and David, and it's probably in, in put to music. There would have been. Uh, all right, okay, back to Psalms 139. We're going to skip ahead to verse 15 and 16. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. Okay. <sighs> I determined the exact time of your birth and when you would live. Hmm. That's Acts 17 26. Acts seventeen twenty six and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139.4. Okay, back to Psalm 139. I'm going to back up just a tiny bit to verse 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Okay, sounds like the author of uh, that psalm, but you know, they're applying it to everybody to make their point that we're all special and pre-planned, premeditated from the dawn of time. Well, they like Psalm 139, don't they? Even though they're bouncing all around in it. Like I said, could be a love letter from God to David, and, and God's just, I don't know, quoting himself? If he wrote this letter at all. I knit you together in your mother's womb. Psalm 139. 1-3. Wow. We just jumped way back in the same chapter. Okay. Okay. Now they want us to go back one verse and uh, read... Psalm 139, 13. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my 
mother's womb. Okay. Still sounds like King David talking about himself and how wonderful he is. Or whoever wrote that Psalm 139. It's definitely one of God's favorites, according to this pamphlet. And brought you forth on the day you were born. Psalm 71.6. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Well, now they want us to back up to uh, Psalm 71, verse 6. Let's see what they want us to read here. Oh. By thee have I been holden up from the womb. Thou art he that took me out of my mother's bowels. My praise shall be continually of thee. And I'm going to read one more just because I'm contrary that way. I am as a wonder unto many, but thou art my strong refuge. All right, does that sound like a statement for all of us? Or is it again the psalmster who's uh, being made a, such a big deal of? What do you think? I had OCD, so I had to read the Bible straight through, you know. Had to do it. Did the same thing with uh, other so-called holy books. <sighs> Don't like bouncing around. I'd rather just read it straight through. All right. I have been misrepresented by those who don't know me. Oh, <laughs> hoo hoo. Welcome to the fucking club. John 841 through 44. Okay, now we're going to jump forward to John. Uh, John chapter 8, verses 41 through 44. Wow, they're going to let us actually do a little, a little run here. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then say they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father the devil! And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh his, of his own. For he is a liar. And the father of it. Okay. Okay, that sounds like Jesus talking about himself. And he came from God. And these people that are criticizing him came from the devil. So, let's see. Yeah, he's been misrepresented by people that don't know him. Okay. I am not distant and angry. But I am the complete expression of love. All right, let's skip to the epistles, to 1 John 4.16, to find out why God is not distant and angry, but the perfect expression of love. All right. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in him. Yeah, that doesn't sound very distant, does it? The perfect expression of love. And it is my desire to lavish my love on you. It's God talking. What's stopping you, Big G? <sighs> 1 John 3.1. Now, how, 
maybe he was just talking to this one John guy. <laughs> uh, sorry, feeling silly. It's Valentine's Day, and I'm reined in <laughs> with my cat going crazy. All right, back to the love letter. Simply because you are my child, and I am your father. 1 John 3 1. It's the same one, okay. Why'd they bother putting a parenthetical citation in between? If it's just the same verse again. All right, we're going to stay in 1 John, but we're going back to a ways to chapter 3, verse 1, and only verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knoweth him not. I guess that sort of means what they were trying to make it mean. I offer you more than your earthly father ever could. That ain't saying much, you know, if you're God. They don't even have to try hard. <laughs> actually, my dad was all right. I think I'd pick him over God, actually. All right, we're going to go backwards to uh, Matthew. Um, chapter 5. Verse 48, the very last verse, by the way. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Well, there's a big difference. He's like God and imaginary, and we're real and flawed. Because everything's flawed. There's a crack in everything I hear. Every good gift that you receive comes from my hand. James one seventeen. Someone else might have thought they gave you a gift, but it was really God if it was a good gift. James one seventeen. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no vari variableness, neither shadow of turning. I hope you're learning something. For I am your provider, and I meet all your needs, according to Matthew 6, 31-33. Back to Matthew chapter 6, verse 31-33. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Yeah, that's some of Jesus' worst advice ever. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. So don't worry about it. Unless you want to be a pagan. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Yeah, I read one extra verse, sorry. But it's some shitty advice. Just saying. My plan for your future has always been filled with hope, Jeremiah. So is he talking to just Jeremiah and we're hearing about it? You know, I mean, that's what I always ask myself when I read this. And when people cite these things out of context like that, it just makes me ask questions, that's all. Jeremiah 29, 11. 
For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Because I love you with an everlasting love, Jeremiah. All right, now to Jeremiah 31.3. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Does that sound like he's talking to all of us? My thoughts towards you are as countless as the sands on the seashore. King David and Psalms. All right, now we're back in Psalm 139, 17 and 18. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Yeah, he's thinking about us like the sands on the seashore. Or and I rejoice over you with singing. Wait, that's God talking. <coughs> um... According to uh, Ziff 3.17. Well, if God's singing, I'd sure like to hear that, especially if it's about me. Even if it might be a little critical, I would still like to hear it. Zephaniah 3.17. Although, I'm going to read 16 and 17 because I'm contrary like that. In that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear thou not, and to Zion, let not thine hands be slack. The Lord thy God, in the midst of thee, is mightier. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. <laughs> I will never stop doing good to you, Jeremiah. <sighs> Jeremiah thirty-two forty. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them, that I will not turn away from them to do them good, but I will put my fear into their hearts that they shall not depart from me. <laughs> For you are my treasured possession. Exodus 19.5 All right, all the way back to Exodus 19.5 Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. But he only likes, but he's got his favorite people. He's picking. I desire to establish you with all my heart and all my soul. Jeremiah. Right, back to Jeremiah 32. Verse 41, Yea, I will rejoice over them to do them good, and I will plant them in this land assuredly with my whole heart and with my whole soul. And I want to show you great and marvelous things, Jeremiah. Now we're going to skip ahead to Jeremiah 33, 3.
call unto me, and I will answer thee. And I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. He's think he might be talking to the prophet Jeremiah, or do you think he's plan promising this to all of us? That's what this tract is trying to say. If you seek me with all your heart, you will find me, Deuteronomy. All right. Deuteronomy 4, verse 29. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul, delight in me, and I will give you the desires of your heart. Psalms, probably telling King David that. Psalm 37, verse 4. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. For it is I who give you those desires. Uh, Philippians, I think. Philippians uh, 2, 13. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. I am able to do more for you than you could possibly imagine. Mm. I'd love to put that to the test. Anyway, it's Ephesians. Ephesians 3.20 now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. According to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ throughout the ages. World without end. Amen. Yes, I read an extra verse, but it seemed like it needed it. For I am your greatest encourager. Second Thessalonians. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us, and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. I am also the Father who comforts you in all your troubles. <sighs> Just like a good imaginary friend should. 2 Corinthians 3 and 4. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of, of mercies and the God of all comforts, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. When you are broken hearted, I am close to you. Psalm 34, verse 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. As a shepherd carrieth a lamb, I have carried you close to my heart. Isaiah. He's really fond of Isaiah, too. All right. Isaiah 40, verse 11. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. 
He shall gather the lambs with his arm, and carry them in his bosom, and shall gently lead those that are with young. That's sweet. One day I will wipe away every tear from your eyes, and I will take away all the pain you have suffered on this earth, according to Revelation chapter 21, verse 3 and 4. I'm in the Captain Kirk of Star Trek V camp, you know. No, I don't want my pain taken away. Besides, how do you take away pain that's already been suffered? Huh? <laughs> I'm not in pain right now, actually. I'm feeling no pain, actually. Revelation 21, 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. What does it? They're not saying that he's going to get rid of pain you already suffered, which is good because that made no sense. I am your father, and I love you even as I love my son Jesus. Holy shit, that's a scary statement. It's pretty fucking scary. <laughs> I don't want to be loved like that. It's like some kind of a S and M kind of, you know, sick shit, man. John chapter seventeen, verse twenty-three. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Okay. In him, my love for you is revealed. Again, I say, holy shit. If you really think about it, that's mm, twisted. Uh, 17, 26. And it's the final verse of that chapter. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. He is the exact representation of my being. Hebrews 1, 3. So he's a, your earthly avatar, or was. Kind of like Lord Krishna. Hebrews 1 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. <sighs> And to tell you that I am not counting your sins against you. Jesus died so that you and I could be reconciled. Wow. That's a roundabout way to do it, ain't it? Yeah. 2 Corinthians, uh, chapter 5, verses 18 and 19. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit, that God was in Christ, Reconciling the world unto himself, not inputting these trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. His death was the ultimate 
expression of my love for you. First John, chapter 4, uh, verse 10. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the appropriation of our sins. I gave up everything I loved that I might gain your love. Uh, Romans 8, 31 and 32. <sighs> Not sure what God gave up there. But then again, it sounds more like some of Paul's whining. <laughs> Romans chapter 8, verses 31 and 32. What shall we then say to these things? If God be with us, who can be against us? He that spareth not his own son, but delivereth him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? If you receive the gift of my son Jesus, you receive me. 1 John 2, 23. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, but he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Bonus. And nothing will ever separate you from my love again, except JC being your little middleman. What is he, like an operating system and God's DOS? Is that it? Romans 8, 38 and 39. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come, no height, no depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Come home, and I'll throw the biggest party heaven has ever seen. According to Luke uh, 15.7. Luke 15.7. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over the sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Oh. I have always been father and will always be father. Yeah, that's what it said. Okay. Thought I messed that up. Uh, it's Ephesians. Ephesians 3, 14 and 15. For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. My question is, will you be my child? Okay. John 1, 12 and 13. But... As many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. <sighs> I am waiting for you. Love, your 
dad. Almighty God. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> oh. There was supposed to be a afterword in this, I think. Oh, there it is. We're not done yet. Refreshing. Finding our way home. We were born cut off from God because of our sin. But God the Father made a way for us to come home through his Son, Jesus. Uh, the middleman. But totally necessary, somehow. Nope. Jesus bore upon himself the weight of our sins. Nailing it to the cross. Oh, oh, there it is. So that we could be born into his family. Jesus is the way to the Father. His resurrection to life from the dead signaled the victory over uh, signaled the victory for us wow we won a victory more than 2000 years ago <clears throat> didn't have to do anything that's an accomplishment i guess some guy got killed horribly and yay for me nothing twisted about that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So he's like a gatekeeper. He's like God's bodyguard, maybe. Or God just can't be bothered, so he got his kid, you know, running the family business now. I don't know. Um, will you receive his gift? Tell God that you trust in his son. The words below can help you express your thoughts to God. Do you think God might realize I'm reading from a script and go, this is like a robocall? I don't know. I guess it's how much feeling you can inject into it, so I'll try. It's in a fucking italics and it's real small. Hang on. Father, I know I can't save myself. And I know you promised to save those who repent and put their faith in Jesus alone. And you, but I guess it's still Jesus is God and God is Jesus. It works somehow. I trust you to forgive my sins so that I can receive eternal life. Thank you for sending your son to die in my place and Make my salvation possible. <sighs> anyway, that's from Crossway Org. Org. And anyway, thanks for the handout. I do appreciate the free food. And it's something to do on Valentine's Day. Anyway, let me know. Do you think maybe this is just some human being like faking a letter from god it's like a forgery maybe i don't know chime in